Hi there and welcome back. Today we are going to use information that we can find on Yahoo Finance in order to calculate the cost of equity um, and in the next video the weighted average cost of capital for a real firm. Uh, today we're going to look at the gap and I'm going to show you how we collect that information, calculate the annual growth rate, use that to forecast next year's dividend, and then using that in combination with the firm's current share price, we can calculate the required rate of return on equity, otherwise known as the cost of equity or the discount rate that we use when we're evaluating equity cash flows. So let's get started. The first thing that we do is we go to the internet and we go to a website, Yahoo Finance, and the website for that is finance.yahoo.com. So there's a few pieces of information that we need to find. First is we need to look up the company. We can look it up oftentimes by typing in the name of a firm, the gap, and it brought us straight to it. That won't always work. Sometimes we need to enter the name and we'll get a list of companies that are similar and we'll look up the ticker symbol. And in this case, gap's ticker symbol is GPS. We can see that right now the gap is trading at a share price of $32.39 and I'm going to write that down um, because I want to make a note of it because I'm going to need it in a little bit. So I'm going to write down here on a piece of paper sitting next to me that the share price is $32.39. So then I want to find their historical dividends. How much have they paid in dividends to their shareholders? And to do that I choose historical prices. In your homework assignment you're asked to look at year 2000 to present and I'm going to make it a little bit easier on myself um, and I'm just going to look at 2005 to present. So I'm going to start by making sure that I set my start date to the first of the year so that I can get all possible dividends that were given out that year and then I'm going to click here for dividends only and I'm going to say get prices. So almost immediately down below I get a list of all of the GAPS dividends since February 4th, 2005. So I need to download it to Spreadsheet. Depending on your computer, you may just be able to download it, but mine almost never lets me. So what I do is I right click and I say that I want to save it as, and I am going to save it as GAP, and I'm going to save it as GAP2 CSV because I already have a GAP CSV on there. So GAP2 CSV save. All right. I'm going to open that file that I saved. And here it is. So these are all of the dividends that GAP has paid between 2005 and 2012. So these are handy. But what I need is a little bit more specific information because these are my quarterly dividends and I need annual dividends. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say year and I'm going to say dividend. And I'm going to start with 2012 and I'm going to calculate that. I'm going to list all of my years by subtracting 1 down to 2005. And I'm going to use this space here to add up the dividends for each year. So for 2012 I had one, two, three, four dividends. But check this out, in 2011 I have one, two, three, four, five dividends. So we can't use a formula where we add up each consecutive four because not always in any given year is the number of dividends paid equal to the number of years before. In 2010 we paid four dividends. 2009 also for. So all I'm doing is going through and summing them up for each year. Only three in 2007. So when I'm done with these I'm going to double check something to make sure that I actually have them all. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click this and I'm going to see B2, 3, 4, 5, the next one should be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, to make sure I didn't miss one, 26, 27, 28, 29, or double count, 30 through 34. All right, that's what I need. I don't need to save this, but what I do need to do is copy these annual dividends. And I'm going to hit Command C, and I'm going to return to my spreadsheet that I'm using for my homework assignment. And I'm going to end, I'm going to paste these here, but I'm not going to use a regular paste. If I just do a regular paste, none of these will show up because they're referencing something else. So instead of doing a regular paste, I'm going to double click or right click in this case and use paste special. And I will paste special, meaning I'm going to bring only the values. So I can bring all of the references, values, formulas, formats, comments, everything or I can multiply everything in there by two. It's pretty useful, but all I want are the values. I just want the numbers. So there are our dividends by year. Since I'm going to do a growth rate, I'm gonna sort them from oldest to newest, which is an ascending sort. And then now that I'm here, I'm going to calculate how much they grew each year. So I'm going to start by looking at 2005 to 2006. Between that year, we ended with a dividend of 32 cents per year. We started with a dividend of 20.2 or 20 yeah, 20.2 20 cents per year. And then I subtract 1 and that gives me my growth rate. I can just drag this down. So I'm going to do a little bit of formatting. These are percentages. I'm going to give two decimal places. This is currency, and I'm going to leave it at two decimal places. Now down here, I'm going to want to leave a space blank because I'm going to want to project 2013's dividend. And then I'm going to calculate the average growth rate. Average G using arithmetic, and then I'm going to calculate it using geometric. The geometric formula is what's given in the book. Um, arith arithmetic might be, but since arithmetic is what a lot of people know, I, I show both. So to calculate the average growth rate, just using the arithmetic formula, you sum them up and you divide by the number. Excel does it for us. 17.38% growth rate. However, that's not theoretically preferred because what we're thinking about or what an investor really cares about is not what happens exactly in one year to the next but what happens over time so we use the arithmetic I'm sorry the geometric growth rate and the formula for that given in the book is going to be our most recent year's dividend divided by our earlier year's dividend and raised to the power of the one divided by the number of years essentially instead of doing an exponent we're taking the root the, the root based on the number of years it's had to grow. So we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years to grow. So I'm going to take that, the seventh root, and subtract one, and I get 13.8%. Give it two decimals. So the homework assignment tells us to use the geometric growth rate to project the 2013 dividend. So I'm going to highlight that growth rate because I'm going to need that later and I want to be able to find it. But when I'm looking for 2013's dividend, I think it's going to be equal to 2012's dividend multiplied by 1 plus my growth rate. Right? If it continues growing as it has, we're going to have a dividend, we'd expect a dividend of about 57 cents next year. All right, so I have almost all the pieces if I want to calculate the required rate of return. I've got my projected dividend, I've got my growth rate, the only thing left I need is my price. And I took a note of that earlier, share price, and GAP's current share price as of a couple minutes ago, although it may have changed by now, such is the nature of the stock market, it was trading for $32.39. So our required rate of return on equity, the discount rate we're going to use, when evaluating equity cash flows is going to be equal to two parts. 
the yield on the dividend, right? What percentage of our share price are we expecting to earn in dividends? Well, that's equal to the dividend of 57 cents that we think we're going to get divided by the share price. And then with stocks, we're not just thinking to ourselves, we're going to get 50 cents, 57 cents forever. We're expecting a certain amount of capital gains or growth in that. So we add our growth rate. And I hit return. I reduce this down to two decimal places. And I've calculated my required rate of return on equity for the gap. And based on my calculations, I'm estimating that shareholders, in order to buy a share of Gap stock, are hoping that they're going to have a required rate of return of about 15.58%. And that's what I'm going to use as my cost of equity um, for calculating my weighted average cost of capital.